Here we go. Questions and answers. And I even got accused of, I think, stereotyping or being prejudiced in this one. We'll talk about snowbirds and some regulations and deed restrictions and all kinds of stuff. Let's just get on it and start right now. Hey everybody, how you doing? I'm Rusty Nelson and welcome to uh, the channel where we talk about just about everything uh, dealing with the villages. Also a little bit of retirement here and there and also we go outside the bubble which you'll hear about with uh, some of these. And this is a question and answer time where I get a chance to go back over some of the comments and address them and kind of talk about things that may help you out or questions that other people had or, or just plain old comments and stuff like that. And today we got a, a few interesting ones that kind of maybe sent me off on a little bit of a rant, but uh, I feel like my eyes are really burning right now because I went through with my Outlook and my iPhone and my desktop and everything and went through hooking up all of my contacts and going through all of my old contacts from years and years and years ago. And it was kind of funny, I went out and um, <laughs> my mom had this, this phone book, it used to belong to my mom. And while I was going through all my contacts, I found that and man have, have times changed since then. But uh, I, de I definitely, like the whole iPhone thing, and I'm sure Android and everything else is exactly the same, but you just gotta, every once in a while, go back and go over all of your contacts, so my eyes are kinda all burning out. Anyway, um, as always, thank you. I you know I take just a second here to say thank you so much for subscribing and liking the channel. It really, really helps uh, the channel out and kind of gets it out there. And really what happens if you subscribe, the only thing that happens is when you bring YouTube up in your feed, it says, hey, Rusty's got a, uh, a new video out on so-and-so and so-and-so and, so and kind of lets you know, and that's really all that happens. So uh, anyway, thanks a lot for subscribing, but let's get to it. Let's start jumping on some questions right now. This, this is actually a, a great question because I've had a few people ask this because, I, you know, I started this YouTube channel. A lot of people have joined since then out of the first phone call that I made to the villages. And if you're looking to buy a home in the villages, it would be great if you could start from the beginning of my videos because it basically chronicles me the whole way through. And uh, so th this question from Angela made me go back in and I don't want to say re-edit the site, but look at the site and make sure everything was in order, make a couple extra lists. And uh, But Angela wrote, how do I watch your videos in order from the beginning? Found the call to the lifestyle office the first night. Where is the next one? Uh, thanks, enjoying your videos. And that is exactly what I did. So let's go over to the... Uh, YouTube's channel, and I'll show you exactly how to do that. And magically, here we are on YouTube. And I just typed in to get this, I just typed in uh, Rusty Nelson, The Villages, Florida. And the actual name of the channel is The Villages with Rusty Nelson. And this is my logo. I'm going to change this because it's a picture of me in the snow. And I thought it was kind of funny at the time. Um, me doing a thing with the villages and me in the snow, but just click on that. And the trailer comes up and that's the first video that, that's on there. And right underneath that is a list and it says, all videos uh, for the villages with Rusty Nelson. The newest first, click here to see the list. Now, if you click on play all, it'll just start playing them, um, all the videos. And well, I'll show you. Click on that, and we get this. But it starts with Catfish Johnny's. Let's click out of that. We'll go back to the list again. What you need to do is just click here, where it says click here to see list. And if you click on that, it will give you a list from the very first to the very last. And if you go up here, you can click sort. And you can click from the oldest and you can sort each of them out in, in what order. And you can watch that. Now, jumping back to here, you can also see I have lists for 
Um, the Villages Florida Lifestyle Visit, first phone call. And you can see that if you hit play all there from the first phone call, it'll start. And basically this list, as you go through it, deals with up until the point of where my I bought my house. And then you've got questions and answers. And then down here you have the outside the bubble type things. And right here you have quick tips, all those quick tips that I did and the Villages Rec Centers. And that's about it. If you're watching on like a, a big screen TV, I know a lot of you watch it on, on the TV, you can type in Rusty in the Villages and that little logo will come up. That'll take you to my page, you know, the, the round circle. That'll take you to the page. And on there are those uh, custom lists for each one of those things. You can watch the same way on a large screen uh, TV. Anyway, on to the next question. That was a good one. First of all, let me say, uh, you, you know, a lot of these uh, comments come through as suggestions to, to me. And if I don't feel like I need to post them, if it's not going to be any help to anybody, a lot of times I won't post them. So don't think I don't read them. I read every single one that comes through and I approve it or disapprove it. If it's negative, and it's constructive, and it's not meant out of malice, like a troll or something like that, then I'm more than happy to post it. And here, here's one from Frank, okay? And this is about um, a video, actually, I just did a, a little while ago. And I was talking about deed restrictions and that type of thing. And Frank writes, it would be nice if you would just make a copy and post the restrictions. And also, I don't think you need to apologize for your comments. Just tell them what video to watch. And that would be it. Like uh, the content you like. Thanks. Well, he here's the point I want to show. I, I want to have this question up here, Frank, is because the um, villages is divided up into a bunch of different districts. Now, you know, I, I'm in 13, so 13 was uh, very recent. And as they expand south, there'll be more districts. And there's also amendments to some of those deeds. But the thing is, is they are all public and they're divided up into individual units. So each unit within that district has its own deed restrictions. So it gets really finite down to almost uh, pretty much the property. And it explains in some cases that corner properties may have different restrictions and that type of thing. But let me show you exactly how to find your deed restrictions, or if you're looking at moving into an area, where you can find those restrictions. So let's jump onto the website for a second. And we'll check it out. Here we go. Now this is uh, th this is the district.org and this is all public information. There is a ton of information on this website. So definitely this is some place you want to familiarize yourself with. But in this case, we're looking for the deed restrictions. So first thing you're going to do is you're in home, go over to departments and under community standards, and you'll come up to a page like this. And there's a bunch of forms, district adopted rules, da 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 da, about the uh, ARC, the architectural review, and the manuals, and tells you about everything. But what we're looking for is deed compliance. And when you click on that, it'll give you the basics. So let's say lawn ornaments. Uh, some neighborhoods prohibit lawn ornaments. Please check your individual declaration. Um, covenants and restrictions. And that's what we're going to look for. And if you go over to the very bottom, download your declaration of restrictions, it'll bring you up to this page. And then you want to select your county um, in Sumter. And I am in District 13, and it is divided up into units. So this is S13, Unit 60. And I am in the area of Unit 65. And that's it. You will get your actual uh, restrictions that deal with your unit. Now, I will put up on top a link to where I talk about the taxes and units and that type of thing. So if you want to go through that, you can click on that or I will put it down in the links down below. You can do that and either after you're done with this video or not. So that's it. That's how you find your deed restrictions. And like I said, right before that, on this page, 
that we were at before is the basics of it. So lawn ornaments, maintenance, landscaping shall be maintained to provide a neat and clean appearance. And a lot of people bitch about the rules, but I like those rules because it keeps my neighborhood really nice and clean. Let's move on to the next question. I'm going to have to bite my tongue a little bit on 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 this one. Um, I could go into a a, a rant, but I, I know a, a lot of you folks don't know exactly what goes on in the background with comments and everything like that. And I had no idea when I started this channel either. In fact, I, I'll put a, a link to my very first one up there. I kind of go back and watch it every once in a while because it, it cracks me up. I really had no idea what I was getting into with a YouTube channel thing and the, and the, the going to the villages and everything. But you get a lot of comments, and this is why I review every single one before it goes out there and it goes public. One, because I don't want foul stuff going out there and nasty comments. I just figure you guys don't have time for that in a day, and I don't have time for it either. But there's a lot of people that all they do is go around and write negative comments. Now, I, I understand some things that are negative. That's fine. And I take them as constructive. And especially when I see two or three that say to do something or not to do something, um, I take that to heart. And, and I do listen to it. It doesn't mean I'm going to post it. But... Uh, you know, and, and also you guys dress some to me and you say right in the note, hey, not for public release. I don't want to release this to the public. And I don't. And and I delete it. And sometimes that information uh, just goes by the wayside. But anyway, this one I think is important to talk about because it's totally the opposite of anything that happened in the video. And hopefully this person will see, after I get done explaining this a little bit, more about myself and Bob and Liz, who went on the restaurant review with this one, who those two I love dearly. And if they were prejudiced or had any ill feelings towards anything, I definitely would not hang out with them. And I love them dearly. They're great friends and they're great people. There are a lot of hoots and a lot of laughs to, to go out with. But anyway, regarding this video, and if you haven't seen it, it's about a review about Catfish Johnny's, which is a, I would call it a fried food, Southern home, kind of a fun local place. That's the way I'd describe it. But anyway, AJ watches the video, obviously, and watches it all the way through. And this is what he writes. Wow, prejudice much? There's a lot. These are things that he's repeating things that uh, I said or we said in the in the video. There's a lot of trucks here. This could be interesting. Not sure what that's supposed to mean. Well, let's jump this back into context. All right, you got three people retired coming from the villages inside the bubble. Now, the reason they say the bubble is because you're inside this protected bubble and supposedly the funny, sarcastic part of it is you're living in la-la land, walking down the middle of Disney or whatever. So if you look at my videos on these reviews where we go outside the bubble to do other things, and the next one I think is a boat trip I took, um, I, I'm going to play this clip and so that you have it in context in case you haven't seen it. Here we go. This is the beginning of each one of these outside the bubble things. Hey everybody, today we're going outside the bubble, so don't be afraid. We're going to go do a restaurant review with Bob and Liz, and we're going to get started just about now. Oh yeah, that's perfect timing. Rusty. Hi. Hi. Oh, I thought it was a different Bob and Liz. I was going. <laughs> Where are we going? Catfish Johnny's. Let's do it. <laughs> so that is it. That is what is played at the beginning of each one of these. And I am making fun, kinda, of us 
going outside the bubble. Don't be afraid to go outside the bubble because Bob, Liz, and myself, we like going outside the bubble and experiencing different things. And I am one of those types of people that will just pull off to the side of the road, especially when I'm out storm chasing in the Midwest. And I'll go into a bar that looks like a local bar. It's pretty obvious I don't fit in there. But when I go in, I usually have a blast. So I, I love going to these places. So let's kind of keep this in context now. We're definitely not in the villages. We're definitely outside the bubble. This is us saying this. Uh, it's good for what it is. That was our comment about uh, the restaurant. And I'll explain that in a second. Uh we were the only ones in there from the villages. So let, let's, um, how do you, and then he asked, well, how do you know where everybody is from? You're acting like you have to be scared to go in. No, AJ, I am making fun of us. I am not making fun or in a negative comment about anybody else in there. I'm making fun of us that don't be afraid, all right? And the reason is, is because when you're inside the bubble, and maybe you don't know this, when you go out, there's golf carts everywhere, right? So going here is a completely different story. There are big trucks with big wheels that are the complete opposite of golf carts with little wheels. Just so you know, I own a truck. I Before I owned this truck, I owned another truck. Or before that truck, I owned a Ford F-150. Now, they didn't have giant wheels because I had no reason to have the big wheels on there. But what I'm saying is that it's funny. Don't be afraid to go outside the bubble. And we're definitely not in Kansas anymore. Has nothing to do with being negative. Zero. Right? Okay, so we got that. Now, going inside the place, it's definitely not the villages. Well, the reason it's not the villages is because there was a lot of young people in there. And when you go out to the restaurants in the villages, it's definitely not mostly young people. I should say 50 and under, right? You don't see groups of five, six people sitting around that are in their 20s or 30s. So there is my comment not negative about we know that we're not in the villages anymore because there's younger people. There's no golf carts, right? So that's it. And then the other part was people started coming there and eating a little bit later than in the villages. So absolutely nothing negative, AJ. And that's the way I look at these segments. Take them in context. Have fun with it. And um, hopefully we won't get any more snide remarks from you. And hopefully you understand, and some of the other people understand, that Bob, Liz, and I are making fun of ourselves going outside the bubble because we all three of us enjoy going to these places, enjoy life, and like having fun. On to the next question. Next couple of questions, uh, I, I tend to get a lot on uh, about being a snowbird, but anyway, let me kind of graze through this a little bit and uh, I'll kind of hit, hit up the second question here in a second, kind of both dealing with snowbird type things. Hi, Rusty. I think you have great information. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. I hope it helps out people. Um, wanted to know if you were a snowbird or a permanent resident. Um, you seem to be going back and forth a lot. Um, I'm looking into being a snowbird because of my family back north, grandkids in New York, but we have, we live in Massachusetts, only a three hour ride and also need to convince a husband even to do that. And that's, you know, kind of a slow start. So, um, yeah, I, I'd love, and then she goes on to write, I, I'd love to see an episode on snowbirds. Well, that's a great idea. Um, you made me think about it. I already started writing stuff down about that. So I think it's a great idea. I will do an episode in the future. Make sure you subscribe and also like, of course. And uh, that, that'll that be coming up in hopefully the near near future. But usually I take a little time on those to, to gather the information and make sure I have it all. Questions I have are, is it better to rent or buy a small space? 
a small place. Uh, when exactly is snowbird season? And if you are a snowbird, do you feel out of place when you start with activities such as team sports and blah, 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 blah? Let me go backwards. I do not feel out of place at all. You go down there, you make your friends. People understand that live down there all the time. Uh, that you are a snowbird, snowbird and you travel back and forth. And gen genuinely, um, you know, my friends that I've met down there keep track of when I'm going back down. Now I also write back and forth to them. But when I go out to do the team sports, uh, some of the sports I do part-time. So, you know, and you miss out on some of the league sports if you're not down there all the time. But being a snowbird generally means that you're not there during the summer and you come down in the winter sometime in the fall and then leave in the in the spring or so for myself i travel back and forth all year long so it's actually a little bit harder that way because you can't be part of some leagues but if you're there during the fall there's fall leagues there's spring leagues and stuff like that so you're good with that now as far as the grandkids and stuff go uh, I have heard a bunch of stories. So anybody that's considering this, kind of heed this because I do ask. And in fact, I will put a link to where Bob and Liz addressed that when we did a uh, tour through their house. They talk about uh, their kids. So I will put the link up top and I'll put the video link down below. But I've heard just about every story I think there is. There's one pattern I kind of see is that people have two places and they kind of, as they stay down there a couple of few years, they kind of get tired of the place up north because it's cold. We're getting older. We don't like dealing with it. And, the, and so they get rid of that place. Now, the second part to that is I've heard a lot of people with kids that have said, you know, we kind of did that. We got rid of our place up there. Now we found that... Um, there's certain parts of the year that the kids come, the grandkids come down and the kids come down to visit us. And it seems like we have really quality time during that time. In other words, they're down there for a week. They love it because it's like a vacation and they're there to see them. They're there to go to the pool. They can take them to Disney or Universal. And that time period is quality. And it also becomes a vacation for their family up north or where they live. And when they want to get on up, go up north, hey, leave some clothes up there, hop on a plane and go up north. But it's not for everybody. I definitely, if you haven't been on a lifestyle down here, you're talking about renting a place, I definitely at least go on a lifestyle. You'll learn a lot. It's great to talk to the salespeople. It's very low pressure. Please go check the videos that I have on that. Um, in fact, if you don't know it, I started this whole channel from my very first phone call. Um, and that's that's about it. it, it it's different for everybody. Um, there's rentals in the snowbird season, which is generally October, November to sometime in the spring, April, it starts to taper off again. But the real hot seasons are December, January, February, March. In fact, a lot of people won't rent you their home unless you actually rent for that chunk, January, February, and March. And it's definitely more expensive. So it depends on what your financial situation is, but um, I will do the the snowbird thing. That's, that's kind of fun. I do have a video already on uh, services that if you're going to leave your house for a while, they take care of it. Some things you may want to think of, I'll put that link down there too. Anyway, I hope that answers some of the questions. And there was, let me see, there was somebody else that had another question. Oh, questions, comments, future questions. Um, asking again about me being a snowbird. Um, Hi, Rusty, do you foresee yourself ever becoming a full-time villager and giving up your place in PA? Well, right now up in PA, I do have, besides a, a, a girlfriend, I have an apartment up here. I don't have a home right now. Uh, and this, uh, Patty says, I'm working towards being able to have a home uh, in my home state near my family, plus a home and TV where I go back and forth. It seems that it could get old pretty quickly. I, I think I addressed that in the other, other one. A lot of people do that. And then they realize that, you know, they just want one or the other. And there are, I've heard about people that do want to move back north and, you know, they sell their place in TV. But generally, it's the other way around. You know, they're down there. The thing is, is when you move down to, to the villages, I, I think most people become extremely 
more active in their lifestyle, which doesn't take the place of their family. I totally get that, right? But their idle time is less, so they don't quite concentrate on the grandkids and stuff as much. And they like it when the grandkids come down to visit them and spend time with them. So just some things to think about. And just as a note, if you look back at this question, um, she talks about the restrictions, and I agree with you, Patty, also on the restrictions. But she says, uh, number three, personal comment. Uh, so please don't post this, in which I did. I cut it out there. Um, don't worry about not and blah, 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 blah. She makes a comment to me. So I, if you folks do put something in there and says you don't want to re repost it, you just want to make a comment to me, I'm more than happy to do that. And I will do it because I see every single one. So you don't have to worry about it going out there uh, unless I approve it. And also just be advised, I don't do a lot of conversation back and forth with emails very seldom uh, because, not because I don't want to, but I just don't have the time to. I'm so busy and these take a lot of time. So anyway, I hope that answers some questions. May have raised more questions than, than answered, but anyway, on to the next question. Here's kind of a fun one that sort of leads into other thoughts and stuff like that. And, and Doug writes, let me read the question really quick. Is there a place like this, but for people who hate golf, you can come to the villages and hate golf. I, I mean that sincerely. Golf is just one part of it. Think of it as this giant, uh, I'll, I'll call it a giant playground. And then you got jungle gyms, you got swings, you know, the, the soccer field in that playground takes up a lot of room. Well, the golf courses take up a lot of room, but I I can imagine that probably maybe just uh, half the people play golf down there. Maybe, maybe a little more. I don't know. I'm just guessing off the top of my head. But it's all those things together that make the playground, so to speak. So it's all the jungle gyms, and so it's all the people that paint rocks. It's the people that like music. It's all those things together make the villages. So if you just take out the golf, then all those people that are there that they like to play golf, but they like doing all the other things too, they're probably not going to be there. So there's nothing wrong with uh, the golf courses around. They're kind of pretty, uh, uh, unless I just, unless you hate looking at golf courses, but there's a lot of other things, Doug. There is a lot of other things to do. You may want to check it out. Anyway, that's it for today. Uh, I still have a bunch of questions. You guys have sent some really great questions and comments, suggestions in. Please put more stuff down in the comments. Or if you can answer questions, trust me, a lot of people read these. If you can answer question for questions for people, um, you know, about being a snowbird and that type of thing, you know, you help out a lot of people. Uh, people really do read these the comments and questions. And I thank you so much for participating in it. Anyway, I will either see you down in the villages or I will see you back here on YouTube. Thank you so much for subscribing and thank you so much for liking. Have a wonderful day.